you've got to put your fucking headphones on it, you fucking idiot. Why you know you got your headphones on, mate? You won't be able to fucking hear anything, will ya? You twat, you fucking twat. That's better. Nice one. Right, let's try again, shall we? 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 That's good. What's up, YouTube? Hello, uh, it's me again. Uh, I've got a little uh, treat for you here, uh, which is something a bit unusual. Uh, Mark Lamar. Uh, remember him? Throw back to the 50s. Uh, used to be on uh, Vic and Bob's uh, uh, Shooting Stars. And uh, I, think, I think he was on the tube. I know Terry Christian was. Yeah, I think Mark Lamar was as well, possibly at the same time. Uh, very good. A uh, lot of people probably wouldn't even think of him as a stand-up, which is why I think this is quite interesting. And I've been to see him live many, many years ago in, I think it was Watford or somewhere. Uh, and he was he was really good. I didn't know what to expect, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, he's good. So something a bit different. Probably no one will watch it, you know, because uh, nobody's interested in seeing Mark Lamar do stand-up, uh, except me and about six other people so uh anyway who cares you know we'll enjoy it in our little lamar party uh so first of all uh quick word from our sponsors Ooh. God, that's nearly all that's nearly finished now so uh yes let's dive right in to uh mark lamar uncensored and live don't know why they called it that they could have called it live and uncensored which would have been much less clumsy and would have sort of tripped off the tongue uh so sorry about that uh let's uh dive right in to this Could I? I was all the right, and I came on. I went, oh, I'm a twat, and just suddenly <laughs> lost my self-respect again. Yeah, again. I'm in danger of being overexcited, so please don't get clapping up because tonight you're playing in Bracknell again. It's a career peak for me, and I, I couldn't be happier. Your applause couldn't make me any happier, especially if someone's had the good sense to leave loads of rolls of lino on the stage. And for me, that's their showbiz. That and the Danny Larue entrance just behind it. That's all I could ever wish for at a comedy gig. Thanks a lot for coming. Recently, I went into uh, I went in to buy some fags in the supermarket, and I paid with my credit card. And the woman looked at the credit card and had my name on it. She went, "Is this a joke?" And I didn't get it right. And I said, "What? I don't get it." And she went, "Mark Lamar." And I said, "Yeah, I don't get it." And she went, "No, because you look like him as well." <laughs> so what? Oh, what's happened to you? <laughs> the bloke's got a big brace around his uh, stomach. It looks like, you know, like most of his ribs have been broken. I said, what's happened to you? And he went... <laughs> like he'd forgotten. What's happened? Broken back. Fucking hell, that's such an honour that you've come with a broken back. You've come from... 
How did, you, how did you break it? That's fascinating. I've never had, had a broken back. <laughs> Not many people have, have they? Like, like, they all have. Oh, we've had broken backs, yeah. <laughs> we're brilliant. We've broken all of our bones loads of times. But, oh, he's sat at a broken back and he's wearing a brace. A lot of us wouldn't bother with that. We're so hard. We're so fantastic. We're perfect human beings. What, what happened? Uh, Don't keep looking down. You know what it is. <laughs> he's going, oh, what about the back? Well, you just like the T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, Martin, I know, oh, of course. You're not allowed to laugh. <clears throat> right, you come to the right show. Then. <laughs> That's already the worst review I've ever had. <laughs> I could have sat in tonight watching videos of Les Dennis, but I'm not allowed to laugh too much, so I thought I'd come and watch you. <laughs> and sit in the front row as well in pain, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Instead of sitting at the back, Grimace, and I'm going to sit at the front, every time you do a joke, everyone else is laughing, I'm going to go... <laughs> you know, sometimes you go into a chip shop and you go, I'll have a bag of chips, and they go, oh, you'll have to wait for chips. You know, what the fuck have you been playing around at today? What? <laughs> What were you thinking of when you came in and saw the deep fat fry and the potatoes? What did you think? The chip fairies in town, you lazy bastards? <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll start the show any second now, so I'm just warming myself up into a bundle of spite. But before I, I start the show properly, I just want to tell you a quick story about myself and, and tell you why I don't really deserve to be here having this public platform and, and talking to you kind people. I, uh, you know, sometimes in life you do things and you think, well, I'm a wanker. That's, I know that now, we all are, but this, I've done as bad as an embarrassing thing as I can possibly ever do. And the one I've done before, I've done a terrible one recently, but I did one once and I was walking down the road and Brian Ferry was in Western London, Brian <coughs> Ferry was walking towards me uh, and I was with my mate and I don't know how it happened, I didn't mean to do it, but just as Brian, I didn't sort of go, look, Brian Ferry, I was pretty cool, but as soon as Brian Ferry got parallel, like right next to us, I turned to my friend, don't know how it happened, I went, we are flying down to Rio and I don't know, I don't know why or how or what I was thinking of. I, I'm not, not really loud or anything, I'm not sure if he heard, but I, there was a little bit, you know, I think he knows, but probably gets it two or three hundred times a day and he's thinking, I heard it again, I'm sure I did, you know, but... <laughs> And I thought that was it for me. I thought, right, that's as low as I can be as a human being, and that's as embarrassing as it can get. But, oh, lordy, I've done so much worse. I, um, I went to watch Noel's house party. Um, <laughs> and believe me, that's the high point of the story. It really dropped off from now on. I went to watch Noel's house party because the Spice Girls were on. Right, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make the Spice Girls. I really did think it like that. Even when I wasn't saying it, I was going, who's going to my girl? <laughs> And, uh, and it's quite an incredible thing, seeing that many people with learning difficulties in one room. And I went, <laughs> I, I, I went in, and they have this warm-up bloke. They have a warm-up bloke who comes on to be in. He's not a comedian. He doesn't make the audience laugh or anything. He comes on dressed in a rustic outfit, and his name's Bertie the Bugler. And he comes on, and he goes, Hello, Quickly Bottom, I'm Bertie the Bugler. Do you want me to play my bugle? Yeah, they are fucking over the moon with this. They're like... <laughs> they're, <laughs> and he plays a, a bit of perfunctory bugle. Da -da 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 -da. There, mayhem. Oh, they go crazy about it. And then he goes up to people in the audience and he goes, Do you want to play my bugle? And they're thinking, Sign for nothing, I'll have a go. You know, and they're going, ah. And they can't play the bugle. Like, who can? Who wants to? You know, but he hands it to her and they go, <laughs> And he goes, That weren't very good, was it? Quickly, like he's the panpipe king of the universe or something. Like, <laughs> like he's somehow better than these people in the audience. But anyway, now they're in the right mental zone for the rest of the show. And anything else. Anything that Noel does is a big whoosh up for them after that. <laughs> so I'm stood there watching it and I'm dazed and I'm thinking, what's going on here? And then I turn around and, and Noel Edmonds is stood next to me and I didn't notice because he's, you know, he's a little, he's like, he's like an Oompa Loompa and he just snuck up on me. <laughs> and suddenly I turn around and there's little orange Noel there and, and, uh, and he said to me, hello. And I, and I wasn't thinking, I went, hello, which that pissed me off because my whole life has been built up to, you know, for to meeting him and saying, look, would you fuck off out of my sight, you talentless bucket of shit. And I never, <laughs> at the time, wasn't thinking of it. So that embarrassed me. So, so I made it, I tried to get away, I sneaked off, you know, a little, just sort of sidled away, and he had to run to keep up, and then, you know, I got away from him fairly quickly. And then I met the Spice Girls, and that was all very exciting, and a sort of 14-year-old boy having a wank, basically. That was that. And, and so I'm thinking, well, the evening's not too bad, you know, I've, I've done what I set out to do. And then I was just about to leave, and someone said, uh, Yuri Geller was on the show, and someone said, Mark, do you want to come and meet Yuri? And I didn't particularly, you know, I'm not a fan, who is? You know, you know oh, Yuri, I love the way you can bend stuff for no, no apparent reason or gain or whatever, but I didn't want to be rude, I didn't want to be impolite, so I went, yeah, all right, and he said hello, it's like, Mark, you're a Yuri, Mark, he put his hand out to shake my hand, and as he did, I put my hand and I don't know how it happened, but I suddenly went, whoa, and that, you know, that was the end of the road for me, basically, in the shame states, it doesn't get much worse than that, I don't think. 
Every comedian, when they do a show, they always hope that it's going to be, not, not only for us, but for the audience, it's going to be like one of the greatest nights of all time. And that, and that for, you know, for, like in the interval, you'll be chatting with each other, like, oh, I can't wait to get back in and watch some more of that. And in months to come, you might see each other walking around Bracknell and you're like, oh, that show, that was the most important night of my life. And get them in a headlock, well, come on, go and have a drink. And Blood Brothers, maybe a little bit of, you know, sp splitting there. Uh, maybe some of you'll have kids, name them after me. And, and <laughs> for years to come, there'll be a maypole set up in the middle of Bracknell and you could all dance around it on this date and, and, and sing my name. That's, that's the dream. Um, obviously, I'm not that good. You've probably sussed that so far. So <laughs> what I'd be happy with is if any of you see each other in the street, recognise each other from this gig, if you could... All right? That would be enough for me, really. That, that's, that's as much as I'm looking for. There is a kind of a theme to the show tonight, which, which is growing up. I'm, uh, I was 30 this year, and I don't know how many of you are 30 or have been or will be at some point. Probably all of you. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> That's very good. Oh, I love it. Good old, uh, yeah, good old Mark Lamar there. Uh, very, he's funny, isn't he? Because he's, uh, he's, he's very self-deprecating, which, which is good, you know, well, not good, but it's funny. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, he's, he's quite scary um, and sort of, uh, you know, London, London boy. Uh, he's got that really good, fast, fast delivery and uh it's a nice little bit of improv at the beginning i like that all the stuff with the brace but um yeah he's uh he he's very good and he was very good live and he the thing i remember the most was there was a woman in the audience who was heckling him and so that fucks up a lot of the show uh but of course that's often very funny and she uh and he 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 obviously well he said he knew her from another gig which he probably did to be fair um it's a bit of a weird thing to make up uh unless he was doing it for comedic effect and uh but that that was very funny that, that went on and on uh and then she'd shut up for a bit and then you know she'd start up again and he'd be like oh fuck it um so yeah mark lamar surprisingly good at stand up i guess a lot of presenters and people um you know actually ask you know start off doing stand-up and then they become presenters or you know whatever uh you know comedy jugglers and things like that um and uh that's mark lamar he is very good i'm going to do a part two and um i hope i hope a few people enjoyed that uh i hope a few people watch it if i get more than 10 views uh i might do something special uh so uh you know up for the challenge eh so don't forget to like subscribe hit the notifications button and um masturbate over the screen when you're watching my videos thank you and don't nobody go nowhere can i say that